Audi has always been a symbol of innovation and performance, starting from its very first engine roar to the sleek and advanced machines we love today. But did you know that in 1885, four famous German car makers, Audi, DKW, Hoch, and Wanderer, joined forces to become Auto Union AG? This was a big symbol of unity and progress, represented by the four interlocking rings in the Audi logo we still see today. And who can forget the game-changing Audi Quattro in the 80s, setting the racing world on fire? Audi's history is indeed filled with amazing turns and milestones, and we've compiled them all in this video. So, let's get started. Birth of the company and its name. August Hawke was a visionary who played a key role in this Audi's journey. In 1899, he started A. Hawke & Sy in Cologne's Ehrenfeld district. A man of ambition, he later set up shop in Reichenbach in Vogtland in 1902. But that wasn't enough for him. Fast forward to a game-changing moment on the 10th of May, 1904, when August Hawke revealed his masterpiece, the August Hawke & Sy. Motorwagen Werker AG. That's a mouthful. So let's just call it a joint stock company in Zwickau, state of Saxony, for now. However, even great stories have their twists. After some troubles with his CFO, Horch took a leap of faith and founded his second company, the August Horch Automobile Werker GmbH in Zwickau on the 16th of July 1909. His former partners weren't happy and sued him for trademark infringement. The legal showdown ended up in the German Reichsgericht, Supreme Court, in Leipzig. After all the commotion, it was decided that the beloved Horch brand truly belonged to his former company. 1923 Audi Type E Now let's journey back to 1923 and discover how the Audi Type E came to be. August Horch passionate about cars, faced a challenge. He couldn't use his name Hort for his new venture. Seeking help, he met with friends Paul and Franz Fickenscher in a secret meeting to brainstorm ideas. Then, a stroke of genius struck. Franz's clever son couldn't wait any longer and said, Father, odia tur et altera par. It means, let the other side be heard, in Latin but they made it cooler and turned it into Audi, which means listen in Latin. How awesome is that? Audi Automobile Werker GmbH Zwickau was born on the 25th of April 1910, and they impressed everyone with the first ever Audi car, the Type A 1020 seconds GP Sport Phaeton. Audi didn't stop there. They introduced more models with powerful engines, 2,612cc, 3,564cc, 4,680cc, and 5,720cc dominating sporting events. In 1924, Audi amazed everyone with the Type M, a six-cylinder beast with a 4,655cc engine. August Horch remained connected to Audi, and in 1921, they shook things up with the first ever German production car with left-handed drive, the Audi Type K. The merger of the four companies under the logo of Four Rings. In August 1928, Jorgen Rasmussen took control of DKW and acquired powerful eight-cylinder engines from a US car manufacturer, Rickenbacker. These engines went into the sleek Audi Zwickau and Audi Dresden models, hitting the roads in 1929. Audi was surprised with six-cylinder and four-cylinder models too, emphasizing luxury. In 1932, Audi joined forces with Hoch, DKW and Wanderer to form the legendary Auto Union AG Chemnitz, ready to shake the car world. Audi Front became the first European car with a six-cylinder engine and front-wheel drive. Auto Union created a special logo, four interlinked rings, symbolizing each brand's strength, the iconic Audi badge we know today. Though initially for racing cars, each company kept their names and emblems. 
times were tough, but Auto Union shifted focus to smaller cars. By 1938, their DKW brand claimed 17.9% of the German car market. Audi had a smaller slice at 0.1%, but they had some tricks up their sleeve. As World War II approached, the last few Audis rolled off the assembly line in 1939, saying goodbye for over two decades. But the story doesn't end there. Audi may have taken a break, but they were destined for a big comeback. Post World War II After the war, the once mighty auto union plants, like many other German factories, were left damaged. In 1945, the Soviet army took over and had plans to dismantle the factories and take everything they could as war reparations. Auto Union AG of Chemnitz disappeared from the commercial register. New Auto Union Unit, with loans and support from the Marshall Plan, a new chapter started in Ingolstadt on the 3rd of September 1949. Auto Union revived front-wheel drive and two-stroke engine wonders. Their motorcycles and DKWF 89L delivery van were busy on the streets, with administration and storage in Ingolstadt and mass production in Dusseldorf with Rheinmetall Borsig. In 1958, Friedrich Flick and Daimler Benz joined, taking full ownership in 1959. But two stroke cars weren't a priority for Daimler Benz, and Auto Union faced challenges amidst competitors' success in the 60s. Audi's revival and its unstoppable journey to greatness. In 1964, Volkswagen got involved, grabbing a 50% stake in the game. They acquired the shiny new factory in Ingolstadt, the DKW and Audi brands, and the brilliant engine design funded by Daimler-Benz. It was a big move, but things were changing. Customers wanted smoother four-stroke engines instead of the old two-stroke ones. So, the DKW F102 got an upgrade with a new four-stroke engine and a new name, the Audi. Volkswagen initially opposed Auto Union making its own models. The Auto Union name and iconic four rings disappeared from the factory. But clever engineers secretly designed the first Audi 100. When Volkswagen's chief saw it, he approved production. Audi made a comeback. The Audi 100's success led to the Audi 80 in 1972, setting the stage for Volkswagen's front-wheel drive water-cooled range. In 1969, Auto Union merged with NSU, known for motorcycles and innovative ideas like rotary engines. The Neckersolm factory now produces larger Audi models and high-performance masterpieces. Modern Era it's 1969 and the mighty Audi NSU Auto Union AG has emerged, with Audi shining bright as its own separate brand again. Audi was eager to conquer the United States, introducing its iconic brand for the 1970 model year. They had the K70, NSU's mid-sized car, ready to hit the streets. But surprisingly, it launched as a Volkswagen instead. What a twist! In the 80s, Audi became a high-performance legend. The Audi Quattro in 1980, an all-wheel drive powerhouse, revolutionised rally racing and took the world by storm. The Ur Quattro, as it's fondly known, made Audi famous for its innovative technology. In the 90s, Audi focused on performance and luxury, featuring a powerful V6 engine in their lineup. The Audi 100 got a makeover, and the Audi S2 and S4 kick-started their incredible S-series of performance cars. Audi 5000 Unintended Acceleration Allegations In the 1980s, Audi faced troubles in the US with their Audi 5000 models. Owners reported sudden unintended acceleration from 1982 to 1987, leading to accidents and fatalities. The NHTSA investigated this and other car models for power surges. In 1986, a TV show called 60 Minutes aired a report on people suing Audi over unintended acceleration, but it was later revealed to be fake. Audi defended itself, attributing the issues to driver mistakes. The NHTSA confirmed many cases were caused by driver errors. 
In 2012, the NHTSA found a problem with the idle stabilizer system and Audi took action, recalling and modifying the affected cars. The aftermath was significant with a drop in US sales, but Audi made improvements and regained sales gradually. The impact of the Audi 5000 incidents still lingered, with an unresolved lawsuit from 1987 pending. Diesel emissions scandal former Audi boss Rupert Stadler admitted his involvement in fraud by negligence in the diesel emissions scandal. 2.1 million Audi branded diesel cars have now been swept up in the VW emissions scandal. Audi says 1.6 litre and 2 litre turbo diesel models in the A1, A3, A4, A6, TT, Q3 and Q5 ranges contain software designed to cheat emissions tests. He faced trial in 2020, but agreed to a deal in early May for a possible suspended sentence. On June 27, a Munich court handed him a one-year and nine-month suspended sentence and fined him 1.1 million euros. Stadler acknowledged he didn't know about the vehicle manipulation or harm to buyers, but recognised it was possible. Two other defendants involved in manipulating motors also received suspended sentences and fines. Audi has made a lasting impact on the world of cars. In the 21st century, Audi excelled on the racetrack, breaking records and continuing its racing legacy from the 30s. Along the way, Audi faced challenges, but they stayed strong, took responsibility and gained back trust. Audi's legacy in cars is unforgettable, and we can look forward to more exciting milestones from them in the future. With that said, thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. And if you found this content helpful, give the video a like. See you in the next video. Till then, take care.